Howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse today. We're going to be doing another special video for my friend Morton in Denmark uh, for his uh, uh, his uh, YouTube channel called My Playhouse. So if you uh, haven't checked Morton out, uh, check my links on my page and go check out his channel. If you think I'm into, uh, into IT and into server racks and everything, uh, you need to go check out pretty much every one of his videos. Uh, but anyway, uh, Morton had the need for uh, some 10 gig networking, and uh, so what I told him to do was uh, purchase a switch, and he did, and sent it to me to send it on to him, because I guess it's not available over in Denmark, so but we'll get it shipped to him here shortly. But I just wanted to go over the switch, the basic setup, how it's adopted on Unify, that kind of thing, and give you an idea of what something like this would be used for. So without further ado, let's get the video started. Oh my goodness, what do we have here? What delicious bit of loveliness is this? I always love getting new stuff in boxes. Unfortunately, this does not belong to me, but that's okay because right now I don't have any need for 10 gig networking. But I have a friend over in Denmark who does. And if any of you follow my channel for any length of time, you'll know that would be Morton at my playhouse. In fact, he was the inspiration for what I like to call the American version of my playhouse called Unky Joe's Playhouse. Morton asked me a month ago or so uh, what switch I would recommend for 10 gig networking. And I told him unequivocally I would recommend anything that Ubiquity makes, uh, including their Unify uh, series of switches. And so what this is, is the uh, Unify uh, Switch 16 XG. And uh, it has uh, SFP ports right here on the front and then it has 10 gig RJ45 ports here on this side. So what I don't have any 10 gig networking to show you but I am going to show you how we power up the switch and how we provision it under Unify and how easy it is and then we'll get it ready to go uh, back to Morton to be delivered uh, to Denmark. Uh, it'll take it a few weeks or it'll take it a week or two to get there but uh, I know he's been chomping at the bit wanting to get his hands on this switch so Again, we'll go through the Unify setup today. I'll show you how we do a basic Unify setup. I've already got my Unify controller set up, so it's just a matter of adopting it and adding it to the network. And then uh, uh, we can't really do any 10 gig testing, but I can show you the interface, etc. And then we'll look at the specs online with uh, Ubiquity uh, to give you a broader overview of it. And then uh, we'll box it up and send it to Morton. So uh, buckle up and uh, hang on for the video. All right, so we've actually got some power to the device now, and uh, it is booting up. And then what I will do is just plug a, I'm going to plug a network cable from my switch uh, on my desk here, uh, which is behind everything hanging on the wall, and I'll just run a cable over to either port 13 or port 16. It won't much matter. And then we should be able to see it on the Unify controller uh, and uh, get it configured. All right, so now that we've uh, had a close-up view of the switch, let's uh, let's go figure out what in what environment we would use this in because you know not a lot of us have 10 gigabit networks, uh, and I'm I don't I don't pretend to be able to read Morton's mind. I don't know what his plans are for the switch. He just asked me if I knew of a good 60 or a good a uh, 10 gigabit switch, and I pointed him to this one. So let's go over to uh, Chrome here. And give you some information on it so uh, it's a 10 gig 16 port managed aggregation switch okay so uh, it has 16 or I'm sorry it has 12 SFP plus fiber ports on it and then four 10 gigabit RJ45 ports so if you were to de uh, deploy the switch as a 10 gigabit switch they give you some examples here you just basically you, you you this would be your central switch or distribution point and then you would able you'd be able to distribute 10 gig to all the other switches uh, and each one of these switches would have the capability of uh, uh, symmetric for or 40 gig aggregate upload download so it this switch has got a very powerful processor in it uh, plenty of RAM to handle the switching and uh, is designed for higher end networks where uh, you need a lot of throughput like between I can think of one example SANS storage area networks where you would you would want speed or if you had 
a SAN network serving out a lot of virtual machines with virtual hard drives, for example. Um, and then they have a 20 gig uh, deployment example where you can use two SFPs uh, and deploy them to each uh, or to another uh, uh, XG switch. Uh, Multi-site management. So if you if you had uh, multiple sites, you could have each one could have its own uh, monitoring and management. Uh, these are high capacity links uh, using Cat six or five E cable connectivity. In fact, uh, you can do ten gigabit on Cat five E, but there is a uh, there is a uh, link limitation on Cat five E cable. Uh, I think it's. Uh, maybe a hundred foot um, so if you're if you don't have any internal six category six or even seven cable you could get by with 5e on short runs but uh, it also supports the SFP plus so you can see here behind me I have now a cable running to a port on that uh, 10 gig switch and I have just simply run it back over to my switch on my workbench there so now let's bring up the Unify access uh, controller and let's go into devices and see if it sees it and there it does so there's Morton's uh, access point if you saw that video uh, uh, his in-wall AP uh, access point and this is the Unify switch XG uh, so there's a couple things that need to be done one is it needs to be upgraded and two is it needs to be adopted or let's reverse that first it needs to be adopted and then upgraded so right now this switch does not belong to my unified network it's in the factory default state so the first thing we have to do is what they call the adoption of the switch or device so I'm gonna click on adopt now this is gonna take a few minutes to do so we'll let this complete and then we're gonna come back after it's adopted and we're gonna do uh, the software update on it okay the switch has been adopted and now it's provisioning and what what does provisioning mean well I've covered this before but I'll cover it again provisioning means is that these settings down here that I have set up for unify are global they need to be applied to every device that's out there and controlled by this unify uh, controller that I'm running so that's what the art of provisioning does is it goes out there and it provisions your switch or your access point or your uh, gatekeep or your uh, security gateway with all the settings that are local to that network so that you have a unified experience uh, and you don't have to go into multiple devices and configure them you just once you get your base network configured with unify you just go and plug in your devices adopt them do software upgrades to them and bing bang boom they all have the same vlan settings they all have everything you need is already taken care of so that's why i really love the unify product so now the next thing i want to do is i want to go and it tells me there's an upgrade to software and as you can see most of the other devices are 3915 this one's 3729 so i'm going to go ahead and upgrade this device now this is going to take between five and 15 minutes so we're not going to sit here while this thing upgrades we're going to let it run uh, and then we'll come back uh, when it's completed all right so now if we look right here uh, I didn't want to do that this is the uh, 10 gig switch and it tells you it's connected via one gigabit network that's a thousand FDX full duplex it's a unify switch XG it's now been upgraded to 3.9.15.8011 and uh, if we were to click on it and expand it, the first thing I'm going to do is go over there and give it a name. And we'll call this Morton's 10 Gigabit Switch. And we'll click on Save. So now that should be reflected, and it is. We now see it says Morton's 10 Gigabit Switch. So let's look at some of the uh, let's go over here let's just go over the details one by one and, and see what it tells us so that it gives us the MAC address the model the version the board revision I like that uh, the IP address again we could have hard-coded this IP address but we just let our D we're just in a lab environment right now just testing it so we let we let it get an IP address from DHCP uh, tells us the temperature of the device the fan level how long it's been up 
how much memory and the load average and uh, if we click on that it gives us an explanation all right if we click on uplink we'll see that the uplink port is port number 13 that's the one I have it plugged into that's a blink to the switch on the work desk and it's a thousand uh, and full duplex and then it tells us our uh, up and download packets and activity and then downlinks there are no downlinks right now and then uh, it gives us a performance rating of CPU and memory so if we click on users you'll see there are no users there should be no users and no guests all the ports can be edited so if we were to edit one of them we could give it a name uh, and uh, if we had profiles set up for the switches we could override them or we can override them right here so we have uh, we can do a switching port a mirroring port an aggregate port we can do manual or automatic link negotiation we can isolate the port if we needed to temporarily we have storm control uh, LLDP MED have no idea what that means and then if we come over to configuration that's where we name it. We can turn the LEDs on or off. I can give it a device tag. Let's see what services are. Uh, so this is the management LAN it's on. If I wanted to put it on a different uh, management VLAN, I could. So if this switch was only going to be used for my for my uh, lab, you can't see it here, but there is an option here to set it up for my MCS lab one. I'm just going to leave that set at MCS. Spanning tree protocol, the priority. Let's go to network. Uh, right now it's configured using DHCP, but I could put a static IP in there. And then uh, the managed device, we can apply changes, we can provision it, and we can also forget the device. So we'll come back here to details. So each one of these ports I could label if I needed to. There we go. I guess I have to go... I have to cancel on that. I'm a moron. Okay. So we'll, we'll edit this and we'll call this, uh, it's port 13, we'll call this uplink. Just to, for shits and giggles. Just to show you how easy it is to relabel a port. And then if we hover over it, we'll see it, it got the name uplink that we gave it. So that's how difficult that was to set that switch up on uh, Unify. That was pretty, pretty darn complicated, I would say. Wouldn't you? Well, there you go. I mean, that's that's pretty much how difficult it was to set up that switch on Unify. Now what I want to do is I want to show you how I decommission those devices. Uh, the intent was to get them set up on my Unify controller, do the software update, just verify they were running. And now I need to get them boxed up and, and, boxed up and shipped off to Morton so he could actually use these in his network. So what I need to do is I need to dump them off of my network and put them back in factory default mode so that when Morton receives them, he can hook them up to his Unify controller and he won't have any trouble getting them configured or knowing what passwords are or anything like that. So I'm going to take you through that step by step next. We're going to do it both with his Unify in-wall access point and with his 10 gig switch and I'll show you how easy it is to decommission those. Now, the first thing I want to do, if you watched the previous video to this one about the Unify in-wall access point, you'll remember that I turned off my wireless access point here, and you can see it's connected and disabled. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go back into uh, the configuration on my device here, and I want to re-enable my device, and I'm going to confirm. And now that'll take, it'll take a couple of minutes to refresh that. Because what I want to do is when I go and disable this one, all of my, as you can see right now, all of my wireless devices are connected up to this device. So once I decommission this device, then they'll hop back over to my office access point. Right now, you can see it's provisioning. All right, so as you can see now, my office access point is commissioned and it is connected. There's nobody connected to it right now, but the first thing we'll do is we'll go over to Morton's access point here which is the Unify in-wall AP AC in-wall and we're going to go over to config and what we're going to do is manage device and we're going to forget this device so if we read this it says if oh, let me move my screen here so if you no longer wish to manage a device you may remove it note that all configuration and history with respect to the device will be wiped out so I'm going to go ahead and forget this wireless access point 
and it has now deleted it. I'm going to do the same thing with Morton's 10 gig switch here. I'm going to go over to configuration, I'm going to go over to manage device, and I'm going to go to let's make sure it's the right one, Morton switch. We're going to go ahead and forget it and confirm. So that's how easy that was uh, to make that happen. And now you'll see we're back to just my uh, Unify Security Gateway, my Unify Switch, and my Unify uh, 8 port switch, and my Unify Access Point. And if we are to expand this, we should see that users are now connected back up to that device. They just did it automatically. That's how easy it is to remove a device and add one to Unify. All right, so now it's time to get these devices back into their respective boxes and get them sent off to Morton so that uh, he can play with them and get them set up on his network and we can see what kind of exciting stuff he's gonna do with them on his network because he hasn't told me. So I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be as uh, uh, glad to see what he does with his network as you are. So uh, we'll get this dropped off to the post office hopefully tomorrow or Saturday, and uh, it should be to him within a week or so. Hope you found the video entertaining and informative. As always, give us a thumbs up down below. If you liked it, leave your comments in the comments section. Donate, donate, donate. We take PayPal and Patreon. Uh, and again, uh, be looking forward to some upcoming videos on those uh, Dell R710 servers. We're going to get into some unique configurations with them. Now, the next video I'm going to put up for you after this one, after these two on Unify, is how I moved my Unify controller over to a separate dedicated virtual machine because I think a lot of you would find that pretty informative. So I'll take you through how I did that and uh, what the results were and talk about some virtualization in general and why I'm so keen on virtualization. So I uh, hope you look forward to that video. Again, thanks for joining us. We're almost up to 2,000 subscribers now. Greatly appreciated. And uh, thanks for keep coming back and watching these videos and this boring old man. Uh, don't forget, we'll see you on the other side.